Hello listeners, welcome to the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon podcast. And if you've been listening, we share stories of business leaders in Asia. And today we have someone from all the way from Malaysia. If you're watching this on the YouTube, you'll see actually a Malaysian flag right behind her. And she's all the way from Kuala Lumpur uh, and also from one of my previous offices in Glow Damansara. So she is actually Director of Partnerships of VLAN Asia. So a bit about VLAN Asia. So VLAN Asia helps to fill SME growth. Today, we'll talk about a lot of, about topics about digitalization and digital transformation. So VLAN Asia helps to fill SME growth through customer engagement with Zendev, HubSpot, Microsoft 365, Azure, and Oracle NetSuite. So today we have Liling here with us. Liling, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for having me today. You're welcome. So like for all my guests, I'd like to start with this question. What is your favorite Kung Fu movie? <laughs> Kung Fu Panda, number three specifically. All of them are great, but I love three. And uh, why do you like Kung, Kung Fu Panda? It's very fun, one. Secondly, um, my daughter loves it too, so I watch it a lot of time. I love his goofiness and how he found himself at the end. Nice. Like, yeah, I love Jack Black, which is the, the voice of Kung Fu Panda. Um, so it is... Uh, I love all the characters. I had a previous guest who mentioned a quote from Master Ukwai himself. So it is, it is really my favorite cartoon, I would say. Uh, animation will be Kung Fu Panda. It's a, such a good watch as well. So yeah, today we invited you and we're going to talk about digitalization. Okay, so um, and how it impacts businesses. So in the past three years, of course, the biggest driver of digitalization, we had COVID. <laughs> about three years ago and then now we are in the cusp of you know post pandemic and uh, we are now moving into a digitization age so my first question to you Liling is what is digital transformation or digi digitalization in 2023 digitalization to us is very very simple one is how fast can you assess your business information like your sales like your financials and secondly how fast can you take action for your business? Like send a code, know how much cash flow you have so you can make decisions, like a, know your customer history. And lastly, the third one is, is your data currently sitting with your staff or your business? So this, this three area really just uh, the main aspect that drives the digitalization. Thank you. So... Can you expand more? So lemma one is having the data, right? So having the data at your fingertips. Uh, number two is taking action. And number three is where is the data, like you said, is with your staff. Or... So can you tell us more about the where is the data? But I remember you mentioned a few examples when we talked yesterday. So for example, like now, right? Uh, because a lot of businesses, we bless it, you are blessed if you have a lot of uh, reliant staff. And a lot of customers, let's just say, for example, um, your customer data, your customer engagement with the business. Usually, business will, customer will reach out to your business via WhatsApp, via website, via Facebook. And then they ask a lot of things. But do you have a system that helps you capture all this data? Or like does your sales staff or customer service staff use their own personal WhatsApp number or email that respond to these customers so that if in case your staff leave, does your, if your, does your business able to retain this data? So that's very critical because imagine if like you work very hard to build the business, but all the critical business information is with that this one long serving staff and but unfortunately the staff leave and take away everything with you. And there goes your business, right? So that is very, very, very crucial. And secondly, if like you're in a service business like us, how fast you can assess your data? If I have a major customer today who's so angry, there's a failure, there's an IT system failure. Do I have to depend on my customer to let me know the information? Or do I have to depend on my engineer to let me know what's the problem? No, I have a tracking, a customer service system tracking called Zendesk. So I just need to tell my, my customer, just give me the ticket number, okay? Then at any time, I can just pull out and have a full historical view or whatever attempts we are trying to address it from both sides, my, my customer side and my team side. And 
I can immediately in the next 15 minutes call my team in to have a plan to, to, to go back to my customers and see how we can address the matter. So I think those are very critical on how fast your businesses can react to issues. Um, like how fast can you take action for your business? A lot of time, there's a lot of questions that business owners always ask me. How do you track your salespeople quotation? Do you know how many quotations your salespeople send out? Um, do you know, like, for these customers, what kind of uh, sales quotation or services that you have quoted it? A lot of uh, businesses will say, okay, uh, I will ask the sales manager and I will ask the salesperson. I can tell you in my organization, we don't do that. We can assess it from the system because we, our code generations are all from the systems. And this is what we help businesses to digitalize. Because your salespeople, your people are busy with their day-to-day. -day. Critical mm -hmm. information like your sales projections, your sales code, pertinent issues, your financial data. If, for example, like a business owner, this is closing one end. Yeah? Every business will say, okay, cash flow is king. How do I know how much cash flow I have? Can I make stuff, shall we? Can I afford, uh, you know, next month there's this stock that has very good deal and promo. And my marketing wants to run a promo rate. Do I have enough resources to run in terms of financials or the human? So how are you going to make decisions like that, right? It is when you have access to critical information, like your financial standing, like your sales pipeline, like your marketing resources, then you are able to take precise action based on data and make better decisions and take action. Awesome. That is cool. Uh, so leading. So I like that point because as a business owner myself, sometimes making the decision, a lot of times is the lack of data and a lot of businesses right now <laughs> uh, to many people's surprise are not very digitalized yet. So what are some of the key benefits if they successfully digitalize? The key benefit is um, they'll be able to get their pulse of their business faster. La. Like for example, if you are a business, one of my customers who's in the chain of uh, f and chain, we all know how competitive f and nowadays is, you know, like coffee or like um, Korean chicken wings. In one corner, you have so many outlets. So how do you know which of your outlets perform better? No? And how do you know which outlets has what stocks? Sometimes you do promo, like 30, Thursday, Thursdays, or special Monday offer. How do you know how much stock is left and what step can you do to address it? Because for businesses, right, any additional stock, it means your money is sitting there, you know. So in all this data in terms of uh, your spend, your profit, your income, your sales data is very important so that immediately you can plan or make an Plan B, plan A. if your A plan A doesn't work, make a plan B. Or, you know, suddenly near Raya, they have a lot of holiday announcements. <laughs> or we have certain celebrations that you want to capitalize or commercialize or take advantage for that. Then at least with this in your fingertips, you can execute your business plan faster. Yes, it is all about the speed of decision making as well. Uh, when it comes to making key business decisions. So I'll share with you an example when a business is not digitalized, right? So sometimes I go to clinics nowadays and what I find is um, they still need to go and uh, pull out my manual file, <laughs> like, like a physical manila card, you know, the manila card. And then they have to look into the manila card to see the doctor's scribbles of my previous. It's not digitalized at all. It's my previous. So I'm thinking like, Oh no, one day, what if the clinic burned down then my records are gone? <laughs> so, so, so like for you personally, so maybe this is not a, so much a business question. So for you personally, which industries or which businesses do you feel that they need to digitalize the most? To me, every business needs to digitalize. Huh? But mm. let's just say if it's in the aspect of the business, uh, the core function of your business that needs to digitalize is one, your financial system law because you know like like our personal finance your your cash flow and everything is uh, blood flow blood line for your business you need to know where you stand you need to know how much money you have that's one 
Secondly, you need to digitalize your uh, CRM, your customers database, your CRM, how you're responding to them. Because any lost leads, I can tell you, I've seen businesses, they spend a lot of money investing in ads, in clicks. They try to bring people in. But after they bring in, they can't track. They can't track the outcome. They can't track the conversations. So you're also still wasting money, right? So you'll be able to track uh, conversations that your company has with this kind of leads. And what you're going to do with it. And like your experience about the clinic, you need to digitalize um, or your staff or your team needs to be able to know all these customer historical experience. What happened with the customers? You know, how they're being taken care of. Why are they coming to you now? What else can you take care of them? I think that's, that's more important because every customer wants to know that the business that they engage in knows their information, especially if it's a re recurring customers, right? Mm -hmm. I come to you, I trust you. What I hate most is I repeat these things, this problem I have three times. You pass me to three different person, I have to repeat three times. So you get very angry, right? And then you go away. So all the costs, all the investment you need to get these customers down the drain. And it's very fierce competition now. People get access to information at their fingertips, mobile phones. They can find alternatives so fast. Brand loyalty is down, customer loyalty is shorter, Bus business people, people attention span is shorter. How is your business going to address that and retain customer loyalty or make them happy to stay with you? Yes, that is so crucial from, <laughs> from what I hear is uh, finance, marketing and, and uh, CRM. The customer information is so important. So when you help these businesses digitalize, what is the most common challenges that you face? The most common one, right? There's only one. The people. It's always the people. <laughs> you have no idea how in time, like, like uh, you know, in uh, end 2021, 20, 2022, we, because it's COVID time, we even help our customers try to find money. So they can digitalize with us. So we were very active in helping our customers get grants from MDAC. These are the bigger smart automation grants. It's around a matching grant of 200,000. So in 2022 alone, we actually um, digitalized total project amount of 1.6 million. What happened was, uh, actually MDAC are very, MDAC is very good. They will actually have external party to come in audit and they go question the, the applicant who are successful. They have audit interviews, they, they have external inter invest, uh, investor come in. Then they ask the, the, con the, the, customer, the businesses who managed to get the grant the, these questions. What kind of challenges you face? 100% of my customers all say, got one challenge, people. It's always the people. How people adopt the technology, how people use the technology, that's always, always the challenge. Awesome. That is very profound. Instead, is is a lot of times not software or not not something digital, but in, in the end of the day, is is the human element of it. Uh, and like for me myself, when I'm used to a software, when I'm used to using a certain um, software or supplier, I will use them, and maybe even cost me more money. But I still don't want to change because I don't want to learn something new. I just want to keep doing the same thing even though I know oh, actually yeah, this one cost me more money yeah, but can't, you know, don't want we, to. We, we are such creature of habit right yeah so then, then when I say people right when it comes to because we are on digitalization uh, topic right it, it really needs top down and the business leaders who want to digitalize need to use it themselves I mean of course a lot of time it could be very easy just like parents buying something for your kids like the, the business owner might say hey okay come I, I buy this system, this ERP system or this customer CRM system. Please throw it out. But it can be, become white elephant because the leader might want to achieve certain objectives, but they don't use it themselves. They don't drive the usage. They don't, like you buy a Ferrari engine and you use only 2%. So let's just say if I buy a customer experience or a sales system or an ERP system, I, I am the business owner. So, okay, I want to see what's my cash flow. I want to see which outlet does better. But then later, if I go to my finance manager and say, can you generate this report now? Then the finance manager say, 
uh, okay, can, but it will take me three days to generate the Excel. If you say yes, then yeah, you must well throw away your money, lah, right? <laughs> because the purpose is, if I invest in the system and I'm the business owner, I open my handphone and with a click, I can see all this. That's the whole purpose. And that's why people invest in digitalization. Because business people are very busy, customers are very busy. When I open one click, I know how much pipeline I have. I know how many customers came in through my WhatsApp channel. I know last month which outlet is losing money so that I know what to do. Just like how consumer, you know, when it's like big sales, you know which, where to get better sales or you know which review is better. It's, it's the same behavior. So management needs to utilize the system and then uh, the user themselves really just need to get used to the system, maximize the, the, the automation function that you use for your day-to-day. -day. If you're a salesperson who your sales manager always asks you for a report, you, sure, you know the boss will ask you one, what's your pipeline? When you close, they're like, oh, okay, boss, uh, uh, I, I prepare uh, like, like you know, once a week. But you can generate from the system. By before month end, your boss asks, they say, boss, uh, I, I have these 30 customers I'm projecting to close. I only have two. You know, I might need you to have lunch with who and who boss so I can close this deal. How does that sound, right? Or, you know, this month you're going to short. Then you can ask your team. Um, I'm really short on the target, right? But collectively, the team, someone is doing better. Then you know your sales manager can help you and say, okay, let's, let's, let's focus on this. Maybe what we can do to, to close. Maybe you can give some promotion offer to close. So business owner thinks in terms of that. Businesses need to think in terms of that to act. If I go to wait, month end only get those sales report, you're sure going to get scolding. Lah, and then you're not going to catch your number, right? Amazing. Yeah, it needs to start from the top down. And I find a lot of it needs to really start from the decision makers. If they ask for certain reports and they are also very keen on adopt, adopting and trying out these new things, it will really help <laughs> to... To go down, yeah. It does. Um, I just want to add one more perspective to this. Why is it important? Because if you are doing business for a few years, you want your business to grow, right? So you want your business to grow. You want either investment, investors, or you want certain ideal to grow certain size where you can have a mature and acquisition. Or even if you're scaling so fast to overseas, mm -hmm. you might even have a listing plans for your company. <clears throat> or even simple plan like, you want to get grants, funding, loans. It's all very crucial you have your systems and your financial report in your hand because that's all they ask for. And I noticed that business, the businesses uh, that I managed to help to look for grants or they have their digitalization roadmap at least in place, right? They can do this very fast because they already did the painful round of adopting the digitalization. So there are crucial reports. They can have it real time. They're real time. So that people can focus on either applying for funds that is available um, or either focusing on growing their business. So they don't have to go back to those admin functions where they need to have their critical reports in place. And their compliance to the financial requirements, uh, those are very important, all right? If you want to grow fast or, or, or further, if you want to rely on, say, or, or ex check for avenue for investments. I think those are very crucial because those are like international guidelines or a financial standard guideline you need to meet. Now. Awesome. That is so important, right? So if you want to scale, you need data, especially the finance data. What is the numbers coming in and what are so cash flow, etc. So next question I would have is, can you share? So it's very exciting listening to you now about what is the impact and why businesses should really digitalize. Can you share with us some successful projects, some digitalization projects that you have done? Mm, one of the current one is uh, F&B chain because uh, F&B is really growing very rapidly in the arena, especially post-pandemic. People are like going out revenge eating. So there's this very popular, <laughs> very popular uh, Korean chicken wings chain or, and also a, a drinking chain um, 
okay, la, this is platform, it could be halal. So it's like a happy hour printing chain people. So these are similar concepts. What happened before was a because they have so many outlets uh, in Klang Valley, their finance team actually takes around like uh, three weeks to consolidate all the financial reports. And they have to do it very manually. And then um, it could one also be prone to error. And secondly, can you imagine a lot of struggle that business owners mm -hmm. have is having resource, retaining talent, um, turnover. So that's also very real. So the, the amount of effort that is needed just to close their accounts and have the financial reports every month is, is, is real. Uh. The challenge is real. So what we did is when they deployed these uh, Oracle NetSuite financial systems and inventory systems, they are able to cut short from uh, three weeks to four days, which would then the CEO can have their team focus on other things like maybe financial forecasting, situational demand planning, that they can help the business to grow better. And then in, for their finance team, they don't, honestly, they don't have to stay back and they don't have to spend so many hours of the day just to do something one day in, day out. That could be automated, you see. So that's, that's, that's one of the, the, the important things that I've seen. Second story is actually during pandemic. Um, I have this customer, which is a like a local Airbnb. It's a very dear customer of mine. I, I can say the name here. I, I got um, close to the CEO. Their name is uh, Subhome. So if you're looking to um, get a hotel options other than your usual Agoda or anything, do, do check out Subhome. So Subhome CEO and I was in the same BI9 network. Before COVID, we actually had a chat. I said, hey, then I told him, hey, your team need this uh, CX system la, to track your, your customer services, you know, so that it can help you la, to track your leads because they do a lot of online promotion and such. So he said, mm, okay, okay, let's have a talk. But honestly, he didn't buy from me at that time. <laughs> then we're like, oh, okay, fine, no problem. When COVID happens, we keep in touch. So they tried a lot of pivoting. We all know how, how brutal COVID was to the hospitality industry. But he is one person that didn't, didn't give up. He pivoted this and that until he found a formula for a program, uh, a, a program of a hotel subscription for his for his sub home. And surprisingly, our principal from Sandesk is the one who brought them back. They said they came to us and said, "Hey, I got this group of customers in Malaysia that uses Sandesk, um, but I don't know them, and I want to reach out to them to see how else we can help them." They said, "Hey." I know these guys. Then after that, I have a text him. I say, hey, you bought it. <laughs> you bought the system. Then he went like, oh, yeah, la, sorry. La. That time, we didn't have the need. So during COVID, um, after we heard from you what you can do, during COVID, we went and try on our own. They actually bought the system and they implemented. But they have challenged implementing it to, to exactly of how they want. So anyhow, long story short is... Um, he still come to us. We help them to re-implement. That means uh, to maximize what the system can do. And so that his team can fully utilize the benefits of having a CX system, a CRM system, that their, their team can respond real-time to the customers. And they use this to be able to scale, to back, to go to Singapore, to Jakarta. And in our journey with them, they were one of the customers that we actually helped also to get the digitalization grant. So it's like uh, we know their digitalization plan. We know they want to scale and all this. So when we are aware of the grants, it's like, uh, hey, Santip, you know, you want to look into this? There's money into this to help you to realize your plan faster. He said, yes, sure. So he dedicated his finance team. We spent a lot of time, just make sure we submit. And then we spent another four months rushing the project out so that we can meet the KPI of the grant. And his business uh, has successfully completed that. Lah. So these are the two stories. Great, great stories. Uh, I like the sub home story, it's because uh, it is in the end of the day, what you want to make an impact is on the customer experience. So it is very powerful, and also as you said, you know, it helps you to get more opportunities as well. So it's not just okay what you are currently running; it helps you to raise funds, help you to get grants, help you to see future projections, and you know, plan ahead <laughs> rather than trying to figure out what is my business doing. 
Like you yeah. ask you to most of the business is like, uh, how uh, what is your sales? Uh, trying to figure out what is it. <laughs> so it's 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 very interesting. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. So moving on to the last question. All right, for today, is a very direct question, but it is a very important question. So how does VLAN Asia help companies with digitize digitalization of business? We actually when I come actually digitalization is an overused word, lah. Okay. The main thing is we just want to know what your business wants to achieve. Do you want to achieve a better closer sales rate? Do you want to achieve better conversions of your leads? Do you want to uh, do things faster, better? So we come in, we consult, we understand your business need, and then we look into the area of digitalization, the few that we mentioned. So then we'll be able to advise you at what level the systems come in that will help you to achieve that end. So we also help you to uh, implement the systems. And after the successful deployment of the project, there is also an option where then if some customers want us to manage their service, because they um, a lot of business actually in Malaysia, they prefer a local implementer because they, they want a faster turnaround time in answering or someone who have already have experience building or customizing the system to their needs. Then um, yeah, they also want us to manage their services for that. On top of that is the last part of it. Lah. Because you see, for us, even though we are digitalizing, uh, a digital company, our main focus of obviously helping the businesses is for business growth. Mah. Business is actually about sales, business, good people, growth, profit. Is that. So we, we arrange a lot of uh, sharing and learning sessions with our customers. Last year, we arranged a market outlook because business is all about outlook and helping. And coming in June, we actually arrange a special session for businesses who wants to expand and grow faster. We actually have a advisor from a company that advises businesses on listing to come and share and talk about insiders, tips, insights, and um, best practices for company who wants to look into the options or explore the options on how to list in Malaysia. And then a, the Consultant also will share what are the nuances, what you need to look out for, what kind of investment you may need to look out for, and what kind of uh, systems, internal controls, implementation, automation that will help it. And the best things about this coming eight June session is um, we will also be uh, sharing about something very hot uh, other than the weather. <laughs> very hot on the horizon, the topic is ESG, the Environmental Social Corporate Governance. So we actually have someone who is very, uh, he oversees the Malaysia and Singapore team where Singapore uh, are able to help businesses on how to leverage on this ESG element in their business as their competitive advantage. So yeah, if you want to know more, do join us on the 8th June. Awesome. Thank you, Leiling. So from what, what I get from that is you don't just focus on helping these companies digitalize, right? You help them to identify their goals, their, help them with their bigger goals, which is, you know, like what you said, um, listing, even getting the grants, etc. So thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for being on the show today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I have fun.